Messier 4 or M4, also designated NGC 6121. It is a globular cluster in the constellation of Scorpius. M4 appears about the same size as the moon in the sky. It's one of the easiest globular clusters to find. It's located 7,200 light years away. Its age is 12.2 billion years old. Inside of M4 globular cluster, there are 43 variable stars that were observed. What exactly is a variable star? A variable star is a star that fluctuates. It glitters. So when you're looking up at Messier 4, you can see it twinkle. So I'm picking up all this beautiful stardust. This is Dias Chuba on the top, another angle. This is Al Nayad, okay, a star in the constellation of Scorpius. We have O Scorpius here, we have the OPH Nebula, which is in the constellation of Ophiuchus. So we're borderlining here, constellation Scorpius on the bottom and Ophiuchus. I on have the in the photo M4, which is down here, also known as NGC 6121. So I have a photo of M4, um, also, and I see 4603. The bright nebula RHO Ophiuchus complex. It's below the RHO OPH nebula. IC4603 is right here in the complex. Beautiful bluish greenish, depending on which country you're in, of course. I got a bluish green. All these, like this one, globular cluster. M4, guys, is a globular cluster. But I always wondered are these clusters? birthing stars birthing all the time every day are these stars falling out of these ne nebulas once they're heavy do they fall through the dense gases and this so we're, are we getting stellar winds every day and no guys this happened once or twice the m4 globular cluster gave birth if you want twice and had many children and with a telescope a, a good enough telescope you can see each detailed stars. If you look on Wikipedia, it's not too bad of a picture. It's a Hubble picture. It's a nice picture. And you can see um, the complexity and the density of all the stars. And this is M4, what we're seeing right here. NGC 6121. Okay, it's the globular cluster. And this is what we're seeing. NASA and Hubble. Hubble telescope has this beautiful spiral. You can see it. It's a beautiful spiral. Still not too bad with my Fuji film. This is Al Nayat, right up here, that we can see. And you know what amazes me is look at all the gases, guys, out there. Look at all the dust. Gases, dust. How can a signal get through there? What is cosmic dust exactly? It's in outer space and most cosmic dust particles are between a few molecules in size. A smaller fraction of all dust in space consists of a larger refractory mineral that condensed as matter left the stars. It is called stardust. Cosmic dust can be further distinguished by its astronomical location, intergalactic dust, interstellar dust, interplanetary dust, such as in the zodiacal cloud, and circumplanetary dust, such as in the planetary ring, in, like we see in the solar system. Interplanetary dust causes the zodiacal light. Sources of solar system dust include comet dust asteroidal dust, dust from the Kuiper Belt, and interstellar dust passing through the solar system. As much as 40,000 tons of cosmic dust reaches the Earth's surface every year. This is the stellar bar they're talking about. Isn't that amazing? 
it's so dense under M4 and Al Nayat. You can see M4 here and Al Nayat there in this photo. 4603 OPH Nebula. This is beautiful. There's another one over here. Cluster. Yeah, just beautiful. The stellar bar so dense. It's a piece that is floating. That is being studied right now. I mean, it literally looks like it's going to form a planet. Beautiful stellar bar. I used one photo in this video that was not mine, and it is the one of the cosmic dust particle that I've showed twice. It's from Wikipedia. Here's the link, guys. Uh, the name of the authors, everything about the photo that you need to know.